from the Bible tells me so. When earthly friends forsake us and all the world sinks, oh Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh Lord, we need a savior up on this weary road. We need someone to guide us and share our heavy load. We need someone to love us and tell us what to do. Oh Lord, we need a friend like you. They say that many trials will come to vex the soul, that clouds will often gather to them for a struggle. In every sad condition, they through. Oh Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh Lord, we need a savior up on this weary road. We need someone to guide us and share our heavy load. We need someone to love us and tell us what to do. Oh Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh Lord, we need a savior. Let the church say amen. We surely need a friend like Jesus, don't we? Uh, without the Lord in our lives, where would we be? Just imagine trying to get through this weekend without the Lord. Uh, how hard that would have been. It was hard enough. But God gave us strength that we didn't think we could have. To, to wake up this morning, get up and, 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 and get to the house of worship to be with the saints of God. It was up to me to get up on my own strength. I'd still be in my pajamas because there's no way after all of what's going on the last couple of weeks that I could do that on my own strength. But uh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Amen. Yeah. And... Uh, it's encouraging and a blessing to know that we have hope in the Lord and that uh, when we don't think we can make it, that's most of the time, <laughs> uh, we can ask the Lord for some strength. You know, yeah. sometimes, you know, you don't have to get on your knees and, and uh, pray. Sometimes you just, wherever you're at, you just pray. Lord, help me. Help me. Give me strength, Lord, to, Get through this moment. Help me get home. Uh, help me get to my next destination. All right? Yeah, Ted got up here talking about he wasn't prepared. Didn't sound like it, did it? Somebody, as I said, you've been doing songs half your life. <laughs> you know enough songs in this song, Bug Dolly D. Just, you know. And he'll be just fine. And he was, wasn't he? And so uh, uh, when, when God has given you a ministry, uh, he's going to take care of you. And so say, Ted, you're just fine. And the songs were appropriate. The Spirit of the Lord worked and moved through you. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for tonight. We thank you for bringing us together, allowing us to come together, to be an encouragement to one another, to fellowship with one another, to edify one another and to glorify your name. And we're just grateful 
to have this opportunity to do this together. We pray that uh, as we worship you in this evening hour, that you'll be pleased with what we've said, what we've done, what we've thought, and our fellowship together with one another and with you will be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Pray that the word that goes forth will minister to your people, Lord, and encourage your hearts and to help us as we go through each and every day that is set before us. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. I just want to share a couple of things tonight. Uh, the plan is not to be long uh, tonight. I just want to sh get a couple of th thoughts out to you. Um, one is that uh, if you didn't know already, the church is under attack. Yes, sir. Uh, Satan is really um, doing some things that uh, is discouraging a lot of people. Our coming together allows us to encourage one another and to overcome that which the enemy is doing. Okay? You can't do this by yourself. Okay? Uh, that's why fellowship is so important. And that's why God has called us to come together to worship him. Okay? And uh, when we're able to do that, what a blessing that is. You ever come to church, and you just don't have nothing. You just don't have nothing. I raise my hand. You just don't have nothing. But when you come into the building and you see your brothers and sisters, it just does something to you. And where you felt so weak and out of it, all of a sudden you get a pep in your step, a glide in your stride. Oh, you all right now? Okay. So the protein we can wheel that walker a little bit faster because you've been energized. And that's why it's so important that when we can come together, we need, we need to be here. We need to be together. We need to be together. And one of the things Satan has done is use this pandemic to separate us, to divide us, uh, to isolate us. And we have to be aware that that's a scheme. That's part of his plan to get us in those positions so we become even more easily discouraged. And he, he attacks the church every opportunity he can. The other thing he does is he attacks our families. Because if he can mess our families up, then the church now has issues because our families are messed up. And, and, and so now we have Families in crisis and a church in crisis. Okay. I just want to say a couple things tonight to try to get us to see how he schemes and how he's always done. He, every opportunity he's had, if you read through scripture, he takes advantage of it by attacking God's people and attacking the families of God's people. Okay? Y'all with me? Yeah. Okay. In trying to prepare something to, to try to encourage us today, and, 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 and prayer and supplication and uh, asking the Lord for peace of what to say, and uh, the Lord laid on my heart th these two messages this morning, and this evening to try to say something to make sure we are on alert 
to not fall into the pitfalls of being divided by the way we deal with one another. Okay? Right? So the Lord has laid on my heart this story to try to help us with our children, to help us with our families. And, 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 and then at the end, we'll talk about how this is all connected into our relationships and how he does it, okay? And the Lord is, uh, gives us what we stand in need of. Everyone has had heartbreak, pain, wounds that we live with, conflicts that we deal with among family, friends, and sometimes fellow Christians. You can't go through this life and not experience some painful experiences. They happen. What we're going to look at tonight is one of the saddest stories of family conflict in the Bible as we continue to look at the life of David. In this painful conflict, may God bless us to see what he wants us to learn from these mistakes so that we'll be aware and alert of Satan's attacks on our family. David was the Israel's greatest king, but his family was filled with terrible conflict. Even his own son wanted to kill him. That would be Absalom. Isn't it wonderful that the Bible addresses the pain of a divided family? Because if it doesn't apply directly to us. We truly know of families who have extreme pain and division that they live with every day. The greatest king in the Old Testament, the one that points us to Jesus Christ, was right in the middle of it. So here's a question for tonight. What are you going to do with your pain and your wounds that you might have even tonight or have had in the past or may have in the future? What are you going to do with them? Because if you don't have them now, they're coming. Okay. This morning we learned from a man whose passions were out of control. Tonight, we'll deal with what will you do when you are hurt by someone else whose passions are out of control. What are you going to do? Tonight, we will follow a very sensitive and painful story of abuse in a family. Our focus will not be on the person who committed the crime but it's going to be on the person who was wounded by it. Okay. This becomes important. And most of the time, we deal and focus on what's wrong with the sinner and trying to get the sinner together, and we should. But what I want to speak to somebody tonight who has been sinned against. Okay? What do you do when someone sins terribly against you? You may begin to experience the pain not because of your own actions, but the actions of somebody else. This is important because a lot of our problems in our world in our communities, and in the church is related to how someone has done something against us 
and we have a hard time forgiving it. A hard time forgiving that person and dealing properly with the situation. Y'all all right? Y'all still with me? Only God knows about all of the wounds that you've experienced. Maybe even experience in this very moment. Someone may have been wounded by a family member, a friend, a workmate, even another Christian. Whatever the case, you feel like your trust has been broken, betrayed. Your confidence has been broken and betrayed, and you feel like you have come face to face with evil itself. That kind of emotion occurs. I need you to turn to 2 Samuel chapter 13. 2 Samuel chapter 13. We're going to go behind some closed doors. And I need to borrow your sanctified imaginations tonight. We're not going to rest any scriptures, but I just need you to see them and try to paint a picture of the foundation of our story. David lives in a magnificent palace with his blended family. See, David had sinned and had many wives and many children. So he has a blended family, as we would say. A magnificent palace. Plenty of money. Plenty of food. Everything you could ever want in a home. From the outside looking in, it's a place you would want to live. Think of growing up in a home like that, never needing for anything. You need, whatever you needed, you got it. Didn't have to worry about it. It was there. You're in the king's palace. Nothing lacking in your life. Think of growing up like that. A dream home. But behind closed doors, you want to live there. But in reality, this was no dream home. It was a nightmare. And this chapter is going to help us see why it was a pure train wreck. You're there at 2 Samuel 13? Okay. We start out verse number one, after this Absalom son of David had a lovely sister whose name was Tamar. Tamar. And Amnon the son of David loved her. Okay. David had a whole bunch of kids. He fathered all of them, but they had different mamas. Okay? So Amnon got so distressed over his sister Tamar that he became sick. He was so, he was fiending for his half-sister. Okay? For she was a virgin and was improper for Amnon to do anything to her. You see that? It was improper. We, it's still improper. Amen, Walls? Okay. All right. And we read in verse 3, Amnon was talking to Jenadab, and, he's, and he was really a slickster, and he told him, told him to come up with a scheme to get Tamar into his room, so he pretended to be sick. Like a good sister, she brings him food. The closer he got, she got to him, 
the more danger she was in. Verse 10, she goes to the room, brings him some food. And verse 11, when she brought them uh, to him, he took her and said to her, come lie with me, my sister. He answered him, no, my brother, do not force me. No such thing should be done in Israel. Do not do this disgraceful thing. And I, where could I take my shame? And as for you, you would be like one of the fools of Israel. Now, therefore, please speak to the king, for he will not withhold me from you. However, he would not hear a voice. And being stronger than she, he forced her to lie with Verse 15, then Amnon hated her exceedingly so that the hatred which he hated her was greater than the love with which he loved her. And Amnon said, arise, be gone. And that's what men do. Or let me say some men. Let me say some men. When a man gets what he wants from you, then he don't want you anymore. Didn't that, isn't that what the text says? That's what the text says. Now, he went from loving her so much that he was sick. Then when he got what he wanted, you got to be gone. And I tell girls, I, I work in a high school, I tell these girls all the time, okay, I'm a man, I understand, but you need to understand how this game works, okay? When they get through using you up, okay, they'll kick you out, okay? And he says, get away from me. I can't stand you now. Translation, young lady, don't Instagram me no more. Don't text me no more. Don't call me no more. Don't FaceTime me no more. I'm done with you. Please tell your daughters and your granddaughters, if you haven't told them already, that this is how the game goes. This was written 3,000 years ago, and it might as well have been written three days ago, because the same thing happens today. Okay, I'm trying to be as sensitive as I possibly can, because I got a whole lot of women here tonight, and I just want to be respectful. But it's in the scriptures. And because it's in the scriptures, God put it in here to help us live through the pain of some of these types of experiences or to help somebody else get out of it. Because we live in such a sad, terrible world that these things still happen. It's Satan's way of attacking the family. Okay? Now watch what goes on after this. I will say something. I, 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 I had one of the boys play on a football team, and he and a young lady had agreed to get together, and mom and daddy wasn't home, and they down in the basement. Mom and daddy show up unexpectedly. The girlfriend don't want to get busted by the parents, and she says, he forced me. She was of the lighter shade of pale. And 
She said, look, he, he, he held my wrist. And you could see the handprints around it. Now, I'm, I, he was holding her hand for other things, but we ain't not going to talk about that. But she said it was because she was being forced. Okay? Young man uh, re uh, received police, 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 policemen at his home the next night. He was arrested for sexual assault and spent two years in the juvenile. Tell your sons and your grandsons that people go to jail for this kind of stuff now. Okay? And you need to show how the Bible still speaks to stuff today. You do that stuff today, you go to jail. Okay? Yeah, 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 that's right. You go, you get locked up. People want to say the Bible is irrelevant. Really? You're irrelevant. But that's okay. okay. Now, she gets distraught. She's destroyed. She's emotionally out of sorts. She's pulling her, putting dust all on her head, pulling her robe. And then she goes to Absalom, her brother, in verse number 20, and tells him what happened. Now, unless you've been living off-grid for several months or several years, how many of these types of stories that we're privy to almost on a daily basis, abuse, we hear about it daily. Our courts are filled with them. Isn't that right? You're in the courthouse all the time. These cases are all over the place. The unfortunate thing, this type of abuse takes place on dates. It's your granddaughters and your daughters. They're friends. We have new sexual harassment policies at work. And they keep turning over and over, don't they? And every time something happens, there has to be a new policy implemented. It's terribly sad. The Bible speaks about our, the life of, that we live in this world right now today with all this pain in our lives. God knows our deepest wounds even if nobody else does. This happened 3,000 years ago. We sit here tonight with our hearts ripped out. We feel terrible about Tamar and what happened to her. We just want to sit and cry with her. If she was here now, we just, we'd just we feel so bad. Just put her head on our shoulders, Sister Sylvia, and just cry. And you might just cry with her, with what happened to her. She tells her brother, and let's look at verses 20 and following. Absalom, her brother, said, as Amnon, your brother, been with you, but now hold your peace, my sister. He is your brother. Do not take this thing to heart. So Tamar remained desolate with her brother Absalom in Absalom's house. But when King David heard of these things, he was angry. Absalom spoke to his brother Amnon, neither good nor bad, for Absalom hated Amnon because he forced his sister Tamar. Verse 23, and it came to pass after two years. So here's the deal. For two years, they're walking around in the palace and nobody's talking. Nobody's talking about the problem. Absalom ain't saying nothing to Amnon for two years. Back and forth. Did you see the text? He said nothing to him, good or bad. Okay? For two years, Nobody's doing anything about the problem. 
David got mad, but he didn't do nothing. And so this dysfunction continues. Well, story picks up. It's a terrible family and dysfunction. Nobody's talking to each other. Have you been in the house for like about 10 minutes and you could feel the, the, the tension? 10 minutes. You're like, oh, this is something going on here. You know it's a problem. Now imagine for two years, ain't nobody talking. Man, what a place to be living in. Okay? We're in verse 23. And it came to pass after two years that Absalom had sheep herders um, in Baal Hazor, which is near Ephraim. So Absalom invited all the king's sons, including Amnon. Okay? They're having this big old celebration, a party of sorts. Amnon is invited. Okay? So, Verse 28, Absalom had commanded his servants, saying, Watch now when Amnon's heart is merry with wine. He didn't drink too much. Everybody in the house got tips, okay? And when I say to you, strike Amnon, then kill him, do not be afraid. Have I not commanded you? Be courageous and valiant. So it took place. Amnon was killed. Okay? See, when somebody doesn't do something the way you want it done, now you got to feel like you got to take it in your own hands. Okay? So David did nothing about it. So Absalom said, okay, you're not going to do anything. I will. He decides to take it all away because he harbored hatred for such a long time. Listen, the more you hate somebody, the more you're going to hate them. And you're, you're liable to do something that you wouldn't have done two years ago, but because you've been harboring hatred for that long, you're liable to do anything. Say something you ain't got no business and do something you ain't got no business. So it becomes important, church, to understand that if we got to, that's why the Bible says you've got to ought against somebody. What you do? You've got to go to them and fix this thing. Because if you don't fix it, it's going to grow and grow and grow. Imagine folk sitting up in here harboring resentment for years. I don't know nobody's business, and I, I'm looking around. None of y'all got none of that kind of stuff going on. Amen, walls and electric lights. And you keep holding on to that stuff, boy, it's going to blow up like a volcano. And it will not be a, a, a pleasing unto the Lord. Okay? All right? So, one of the biggest reasons we have so many problems in our world, our workplace, our families, our schools, our communities, and even a church is the issue of revenge and the issue of justice. So let me illustrate to you what I'm talking about. Take out your herald, if you have it, or a piece of paper, or an offering envelope. If you have a pencil, draw a line down the middle. If you don't have one, imagine a line down the middle of whatever paper you have. Put vengeance or revenge on the right side of the column. Then put justice on the left side. Okay? Now, here is what we do. We know that the Bible teaches that we are not to have revenge or vengeance in our heart toward our, toward our brothers and sisters, right? 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 Vengeance is mine. Saith the Lord, what? I will repay. So we know it's wrong to act out of a vengeous attitude. 
We know that because that's sin, Brother Allen, right? We, that's clear scripture. So guess what we do? We redefine vengeance and we slide it over to the justice column. And this is why we do it. Because we know we can't act against somebody out of revenge. Because that's wrong. However, if we can redefine it and make the problem they have with us more about justice, then I can act on that. That's what we do. We even quote scripture to give us justification to do so. We call it righteous indignation. <laughs> Big fancy word for I'm going to get you back. Okay. We quote Amos 5, 24. Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. I'm just executing righteousness and justice. I got Bible for it. That's what we do. We redefine what vengeance is so that we can have a right to act a fool on somebody that we don't like. That's the problem. And that's why our relationships in our church, let me just say our church, I'm just going to say, I can say the world and the community, we already know them folks do that. And I'm not talking about here in this place, but Christians as a whole, Shannon, we take vengeance and redefine it. Now, I can go after you. And that's what happens. See? We don't care because somebody has got to pay for my pain. I got to get somebody. I'm almost done. Give me a couple minutes. Another thing that happens is we recruit other people to join us exercising judgment on others. So if I got an art against Ted, I'm going to tell, tell, tell Halo, you know, I don't like Ted, man, you know what Ted did, blah, 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 boom, 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 bing. So now Halo don't like Ted because me and him are boys. And so therefore, he ain't going to like you because of how you treated me, okay? So then, imagine if there's four or five of those kind of folk. What if I tell this whole section here? Man, Ted, I tell you, man, I, he, he, boy, he did, he did what? And so all of y'all don't like him now because we boys, we girls, okay? And so now, we all looking at Ted sideways. He trying to figure out what in the ham sandwiches is going on in here. <laughs> oh, Halo looking at me all crazy. I ain't done nothing to him. No, you didn't do nothing to Halo. But I recruited him because we boys and he going to stand up for me. And that's why people sometimes be looking sideways at you and you trying to figure out what is, where did this come from? I ain't done nothing to that sister. Why is she tripping? Because you, you, played her, you played her girl, and therefore you're the enemy too. Okay? So, here's what happens. We go after everybody else's boy, everybody else's girl. It happens in organized crime all the time. It happens in the streets all the time. Rocky, here's what happens. You do something, you messed up the money, and you're giving it to the kingpin, dude. And he said, you, owe, you, you, you cut some money out. Yeah, yeah, but I needed it. Oh, he said, so what does he do? He not only going to get you, but he's going after your family. No, they didn't have nothing to do with it. That, just ain't, that ain't how it works. You got to go after whomever is connected to the person that you got an issue with. And that's why it's important that we understand how Satan works 
to get us all crazy against each other. That's how it goes. And you're going to tell somebody because Absalom told his boys. Let me show, let me read the text. Okay. Verse 32. Then Jonadab, the son of uh, Shemar, David's brother, answered and said, Let not this Lord's, uh, let, let not my Lord suppose that they have killed all of my young men, the king's son, and only Amnon is dead. For by the command of Absalom, this has been determined from the day that Amnon forced himself on Tamar. What's the point? The point is that for two years, he didn't talk to, to Amnon, but he was talking to his boys. And they're not surprised that Amnon got killed because he talked to them about what he was going to do one day. Okay? And folk in the church, yeah, I'm just waiting for the right time to get him. I'm just waiting for the right time to get him. Just like Absalom did to Amnon. I'm just waiting for the right time. And then for two years, it came to pass. Okay? It's unfortunate that we hold grudges against each other for so long. And we don't do what the Bible says. Go work the thing out. And you can't do it? Then take another brother. Another sister. Somebody. Work something out. Because I may not be able to work it out. But I take Sister Gosha or somebody who got an influence over you and said, listen, boy, quit acting crazy. And you respect her enough to say, okay, I'm off. You ain't want to listen to me, but you'll listen to her because you respect her better than you do me. It, uh, whatever works is what God is trying to get us to do. Get somebody that can help you with the problem. That's what the Bible teaches, okay? And this story is teaching us just how we do stuff. This is how we do stuff, okay? Absalom took things in his own hands. And then he decided that because David didn't do enough, that he was going to get David too. That's how it works, y'all. Anybody that's connected that don't do it the way I want it done. So here's what church folk do, and I'm going to be done. Here's what church folk do. You got a problem with somebody, and you go to Halo, Elder Halo, I got a problem with such and such and such and such. Can you help fix this? If Halo don't fix it the way you want it fixed, then you're going to turn on him. So how do you turn on Halo? Well, besides looking sideways at him and not liking him and all of that kind of stuff, here's what you do. So when Halo asks for somebody to be a part of a ministry, here's what we, how we respond. I ain't going down there to help them people. Well, Halo got the nerve to ask me to help him. I ain't thinking about him. Okay? It becomes a him and a them. I wish I would help them people out. I wish I would go help him. That's an Absalom move against David. Okay? I got to go get the person that didn't do nothing about it. David didn't do anything about it. So, I'm going to go get him. You don't like the way Halo handled the problem, so you're going after him. But here's what it is. What you forget is, it's not Halo's problem. It's not, it's the Lord's work. But you make it Halo's work. I ain't helping him. I ain't helping them. And it's the Lord all the time. No, you ain't doing that. This ain't about Halo. This is about the Lord. And then the thing we do most of all is we start, now, I, I ain't giving them people none of my money. I wish I would give them people my money. I wish I would give him my money. You're not giving the halo. You're giving to the Lord. But because you upset and you got to get at him for something, you didn't like the way he handled 
you turn it off the Lord and on him because you can't mess with the Lord. <laughs> yeah, you, you can't go that way to, to, to God. So you got to find somebody else I got to get. And he becomes the target because he didn't fix the problem. Not the way you wanted it. You wanted him to kick out the church. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You wanted something drastic to happen, and all he did was counsel and fix it, but you didn't like that because you want that person to hurt like you hurt. You want them to have pain like you have, and because he didn't do it the way you want it, I got to turn on him now. That's how it works. That's how people do, and that's why we can't get past nothing. That's why we, we struggle to get things done because folk get mad because things ain't, didn't happen the way they wanted it to happen. And that's what happened to Absalom. Okay? That's what happened to him. And then later, he tried to kill his father. But he got killed because David boys went after him. And that's what happens today. Last thing. Years ago, if I had a problem with Clark, me and Clark would go heads up. Remember heads up? Me and Clark, let's go, man. So uh, Richard, Clark's boys on that side, my boys on this side. And the reason they show up, Christine, is to make sure nothing don't go down out of, out of pocket, okay? So if Clark is beating the ham sandwiches out of me, they say, hey, man, that's enough. We ain't, we ain't trying to get nobody killed. But we would go heads up, okay? And then whatever happened, it was over with. Remember those days? Who remember those days? Okay? Doesn't happen that way now. Don't happen that way now. You better keep your kids out of fights because if they beat up Susie, Susie bringing auntie, grandma, and everybody else to the house, and it's going to be a big old mess, and it ain't going to end until somebody dies. Okay? And this thing didn't end until it was death. Death of Amnon and death of Absalom. And the same thing happens today. People die from stuff that they don't think was ever handled right. I'm just trying to show you what the, how, how, great the, how good the Bible is. Ain't the Bible something? Did the meet us right here today? Amen. All right, now let's get some answers and let me go. Let's go home. Okay? Ooh, longer than I want it to be. Let's go to Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, 29 through 32 for our answers of how we deal with life and attack from Satan and what he does and what he's trying to do in the church and what he's trying to do to some of us. Okay? We're not going, Boulevard is not exempt. Okay? If Satan can destroy this congregation, he will. Okay, and we need to be alert. 29, let no cor corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary for edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. That don't sound like no conflict, does it? And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed by the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Man, if we could do that. And be kind to one another. Tenderhearted. And here is the thing that has to happen. Forgiving one another. Even as God in Christ forgave you. See, if we really paid attention to verse 32, we probably wouldn't do some of the mess we do. Because if we could remember the fact that except, except for the grace of God, I would be in a mess. That God forgave me from all of what I, how come I can't forgive somebody else? And that's where we've got to live. Okay? If we could live in verse 32, live in all these verses, but especially verse 32. Whenever something is said or done, and most of the time it's not done on purpose anyway, we can get by some of this foolishness because Satan is attacking the church family. And as we see 
with David's family, we can see in families today he's attacking our families, our families at home and our families at church. Let him not get the victory. Get thee behind us, Satan. You have no power over us. In the name of Jesus, we ask that you get your hands off God's people. Get your hands off God's children. Even now, this very moment, in Jesus' name, let the church say amen. amen. All right. Plan of salvation. You hear the word. Faith comes.